uh, a colleague from, no from Norway, <laughs> Ingelov Eriksson, who is going to um, present the results of uh, the Oslo subservice project that is running parallel to our post action. Please, Ingelov, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, Hans. Um, I will start just to greet you with the challenges uh, that we have uh, according to the subsurface in the slide, which is the reason why the project has been uh, initiated. Uh, well, first of all, Oslo. Oslo is uh, quite a large municipality with about 450 square kilometers, but it's important to Yes, it's important to know that there is a huge amount of the city that is a natural reserve. This is a fjord, and there is only this part that is built up and is going to continue being built up and developed. We are currently 667,000 inhabitants, rapidly growing, about 2 percentage per year. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, subsurface infrastructure. Uh, we have all the Pipes and cables uh, that most cities do have. Uh, we have a lot of foundations. This is the um, quick hit about the ground conditions. This is bedrock, and in between there is a lot of uh, clay. And here it's about 90 meters between bedrock and uh, the surface. So this calls for a quite an extensive. Uh, foundations of the buildings and uh, even in this case the road, <coughs> um, a major sewage line. We also have a lot of tunnels. Um, this is about two square kilometers at the uh, east, southeast of the city. Um, and this picture was made while they were planning for the new uh, railway uh, tunnel, which is currently under construction, 22 kilometers of. Uh, railway tunnel uh, with double tracks. Um, there is also uh, about four or five other tunneling projects being planned and uh, thought about for the moment. Um, this is um, <coughs> from our municipal master plan showing orange areas that are about to be developed or are planned to be developed. Um, these round dots are transport hubs have been uh, identified and all the little blue dots that's uh, single looped energy wells um, which sometimes are just not one but a whole bunch of them under uh, large constructions um, they can be uh, drilled without any uh, permission from the municipal but they need to be re registered into the national yeah, register of uh, NGOs. We also have um, challenges with subsidence, and that causes damages to uh, buildings and infrastructure, uh, notably the area in the very city centre where the main uh, central train station is located. <coughs> which is, uh, currently has a subsidence of around two to three centimetres a year. There is also quick clay and alum shapes that uh, we have to deal with. A uh, photo up here is from uh, a major clay, um, quick clay event in 1954 where five people uh, died. So, to the Oslo subsurface project. We've been going on for four years, started up in 2013 and finished in 2016. Um, the final report's not quite ready, <laughs> but will be soon. Um, we've been working together with uh, five municipal agencies. Um, and we've been a truly interdisciplinary group with 15 people, about nine different types of education and professions. Everything from uh, architects, jurists, engineers, geologists, and so on and so on. 
Our main objective was a safe urban development with effective tools for a sustainable use of Oslo's subsurface. Uh, quickly <coughs> choosing some of the resources, uh, there's a lot of them, not enough to fit in a 20 minute presentation. Uh, but one of the first things that we did was uh, contributing to the municipal master plan that was under um, uh, under work uh, for the first four or five months of the project. We had the possibility to to add information, and it ended up in in uh, zones requiring special considerations with restrictions to establish <coughs> energy wells within the city. That means that anyone who wants to establish an energy well within these zones here, they need to uh, ask permission from, not from the municipality, but from the <coughs> national organizations that do construct uh, major substantial constructions, like the National Road Agency, National Railway Agency, and so Um We've also done a lot of discussion <coughs> and research about subsurface information and there can be so many reasons to use subsurface information within the municipality. It can be all from the trying to find a leaking uh, water pipe to making large uh, strategic decisions about the city. And the main challenge for us was that subsurface information is often difficult to uh, access. Um, for example, uh, written here, the transmission lines, power transmission lines that above ground, they are obliged to be a part of the base map. As soon as they go under the ground, they completely <laughs> disappear. <laughs> so, but they don't. <laughs> and then they are considered um, a threat to sometimes a threat to security to actually put them on the map. And what is needed, um, yeah, we have looked at the urban planning process very much uh, with the help of Johan, who will present after me. Um, and we see that we need competence and knowledge about the subsurface uh, within the municipal organization. We need knowledge about what information is needed and when it's needed, and who needs it. Uh, and we need maps and models that can give, give us access to the information. And we also need uh, workflows and processes that include subsurface information in the urban planning process. We have pr produced a large document with uh, uh, the with, um, these kind of uh, processes and workflows, and it's a very demanding work for everyone, and very demanding to understand this, this for us. And we need accessibility to subsurface information, uh, and we have proposed a joint system for subsurface information within the municipality, which is knowing that we don't have a joint system for uh, surface information, um, but at least we are identifying it and we are uh, presenting it as a solution. In order to understand what information to use when, we started uh, making this huge table. I, I didn't put it here for you to read it, but rather to get the idea of the complexity here. Uh, we <coughs> use our Planning and Building Act. So from the municipal master plan down to the construction permit and all the processes <coughs> in between. Um, and we decided, we, we, through workshops and meetings and so on, try to understand what information was needed when. Um, we have done this table for three municipal organizations, the planning and building um, uh, department, the water and sewage department, and the urban uh, development This is not ready, and I reckon that such a table should be uh, revised uh, annually or every two years or something. And it's um, very much the experience from having done it that has given us a lot of uh, knowledge rather than just reading it. 
Okay, so our national legislation good enough? That was one of the questions. I have three, from the start, three jurists working in the project. And um, it, the Planning and Building Act is good enough. We just need to use it more efficiently. But we identified pipes and cables and other subsurface structures that should be reported to the National Register. That is uh, currently under process uh, at the national level. Um, and we also recommend a law that states that uh, geotechnical and geological information should be reported into the national database for ground investigations. And there is also a challenge because the National Cadastral Registration System does not allow us to register uh, in 3D and it doesn't, um, your, you can register a surface like this and it can have one depth. So you can't have a, a construction going up this, which is a limit. And also we see that groundwater levels in urban areas are not sufficiently protected in our legislation. It's a, a challenge for us. We also see on a local level that uh, data should be collected um, and we are proposing a groundwater database um, that should manage and distribute all groundwater data in the city. And we also want it to be obligatory to report into the database. <coughs> and we also recommend the city to establish a groundwater measure program. Um, this is where currently searching in our legislation to find uh, legislation that gives us uh, yeah, the possibility to do this and the possibility to use municipal powers for this. Fundings. So we also choose uh, some test areas of the city where we uh, produce some maps and models and, and so this is going to be more fun to watch. <laughs> um, we have in Oslo a, 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 a geotechnical uh, database but um, archive <coughs> uh, which contains about 200,000 geotechnical uh, investigations most of them just gives us information about the depth to bedrock. We have used the data of depth to bedrock to create a depth to bedrock map uh, for the whole city, but this is just our test area. Looks like this. We also searched in our building archive uh, about information about the types of foundations uh, and created this map and the whole system to, to actually classify the foundations um, and we uh, digitized the technical information from our archive also in special areas um, going from the PDFs to an Excel uh, spreadsheet and then finding profiles you see here and then I will show you earlier um, this is steps to bedrock, and here are uh, the technical boreholes. Uh, and we made profiles, and we also try to find different ways of, of uh, presenting this information. And, and when we presented it uh, in the municipality, and I even presented it to geological students in, in Oslo, and they were all going, "Yeah, wow, well, wow, that's that looks really." really good and really nice and, and so on but in the end they didn't understand what they were seeing <laughs> no one could actually bring it into them so we continued and, and did some thinking about how to present this what is the relevant information to present and uh, in this case we wanted to show up where there is quick clay uh, which are the red dots i tried to make it might be a little bit small and the orange dots are uh, just clay. Um, but of course, all these <coughs> investigations are from the 1950s and onwards until now. So, um, this area is the new uh, large development area called Kovenbjörn. Um, 
And when we produced this information to our urban planners, we saw that they actually came back to us and they asked, could we have it into our analysis of how to use this information? We also produced uh, subsurface use in 2D and 3D. Um, a subsidence attention map where we put together uh, average subsidence information, depth to bedrock, and Faulkner geology maps in that place, which is what we are planning to bring into the, or we are, uh, one, um, we we'll propose to bring it into the uh, municipal master plan. And by using the full potential of the Norwegian Planning and Building Act, we can uh, have a better the future use of the subsurface in the will be more efficient. Um, and what should be done at what level? This is a uh, key, uh, our key results, I'd say. Um, and we have written a lot about it, and I've tried to just bring up the essential here. We propose that the revised municipal master plan also should identify the need for buffer zones for subsurface construction. And to reduce subsidence, we propose that groundwater levels should be protected in the revised version. And we also propose a municipal uh, subplan for the subsurface, very much like the one in Helsinki. And the purpose is to coordinate larger existing and future subsurface constructions. Um, and to regulate buffer zones in more detail. And it's very important to bring in ground conditions such as alum shales, quick clay, depth to bedrock into this uh, strategic planning of the subsurface. At a detailed level, we should uh, use area development plans and detailed plans for uh, large constructions, uh, which is being done at the moment, but not always. Um, and we also propose a subsurface information analysis that should be carried out to provide relevant subsurface information into the planning process. And we can see that it's starting to be brought in already, uh, thanks to the work and the digitization of um, geotechnical information that we've done, which is very but we need to get this into our quality uh, management system that it should be obliged that every urban planner in this state should consider this information. Which is what we have proposed. And uh, for building project, there is a need for more information about ground conditions and subsurface structures at this level. The information needs to be available. That's a key aspect here. They know that there are things, but they don't know where to find the information. They don't have time to dig into the archive. Uh, <coughs> and we also see a gap in national legislation where subsurface constructions are not always included in building application process, like uh, the energy wells, for example. And um, we are producing <coughs> an action plan for the uh, management of the subsurface in Oslo. We need to start with sufficient legislation to manage the subsurface. We need to ensure that we have information about the subsurface. We need to manage and use that information. And we need to plan and use the sub urban subsurface. But we can't do it if we don't have information, if we don't have legislation that, that, that forces us to do it. And then we will arrive at some real management of the urban subsurface. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I just want to say that all these people have been vital and I wouldn't have been standing here if it wasn't for them, especially Joanne, who's in the room today. I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, Ignatius. I think it's really impressive what you've achieved between all the different uh, groups in, in Oslo. It's really Really, I step forward. An example for many others, I think. Any questions to Ingela? Yes, please. Um, I wonder will this uh, future master plan be a 3D model and thereby also identifying conflicts between different usage? I mean, the future sewage tunnel and the future tunnels and yeah. prioritize between them. 
that's what we are we would like to see, yeah, and that's what we're but it's a long way. We're not there yet. Because there is so much information that is not left only a hidden PDF and some archive somewhere. It's a long way to get. But uh, that's our vision. But with this this we have now, but you see in the future, the next in the coming years, what will happen? Um, it depends. It depends on political decisions <coughs> uh, because we are proposing um, the soft surface um, master plan. If that will happen, that will definitely promote a lot of three D information and so on. Uh, and also, if we get, uh, we're also proposing a team of four or five persons to increase the uh, subsurface knowledge and, and get the knowledge into the processes. Very much like we do in Gothenburg. Okay, what's the same? Okay, then we need to stop here. Thank you very much, Ingla. And then we're going 